This conference will now be recorded. Hello, and welcome to my shiur on the Ketoret. So uh, based on what's going on with uh, the whole coronavirus, I decided that uh, I'd like to share with you some thoughts about the Ketoret, uh, specifically because, you know, we're struck at home, and we're trying to figure out things that we can do. Um, and by far, I think the most powerful thing we can do is, is pray. Uh, because uh, our prayers have tremendous effects on things, even though sometimes we may not think that they do, which is part of the problem. <laughs> if we believe that our prayers have a power, then that's how they get power. So we, we need to really start to think that we can actually change things through our prayer. Um, and being that that is the case, so I wanted to share with you, um, you know, some explanations about the Ketoret specifically. Uh, I'm not a you know big believer in a lot of these civil law. They want you to do kinds of crazy things, and you know for sure they do something. But I know for a fact <laughs> that the Torah tells us that the Ketoret has some tremendous powers, specifically in regards to plagues. Um, and uh, I'm going to share with you some sukim from the Torah, a little explanation, and then we're going to go into the Ketoret that we say every day in our tefillah, um, one paragraph at a time, and I'm going to explain them to you. So we'll start at the top, um, you know, and Bnei Israel uh, had in the desert the story with um, Korah, where he challenged Moshe and Aharon's leadership. And uh, after the, uh, you know, that event, there was a plague and uh, Bnei Israel started to die as a punishment for what happened. And um, it, we're going to start over here on the right hand side of the screen. You can see that this psukim from Bamidbar, Perik Yud Zayin, Pasuk Tet through Yud Gimel. I'm going to read them to you and explain. Hashem told Moshe, Remove yourself from this group. Let me destroy them right now. They're going to fall on their faces. Moshe tells Aharon, Go take a pen. Put on it. Fire or coals. Me al hamizbeach. So we're talking about coals from the from the beach. Vesim ketoret. I want you to place the incense. Veholech mehera el haida vechaper alehim. I want you to run into the camp and bring kapara for the people. The kikavai ki atzah haketzef milufne Hashem. Hashem's anger has left. Hachel hanagef and the the plague has started. Vayikach Aharon. Ka'asher di ben Moshe, right? Moshe, Aharon did what Hashem, what Moshe told him to do. Vayarot el tocha kahal, he ran into the group of the, the nation. Vehine hechel hanegef, he saw that yes, the plague has started. Ba'am, vayiten et ha-ketoret, he placed the ketoret on the coals. Vayichaper ha-la'am, he brought them kapara, forgiveness. Vayamod ben ha-metim, u ben ha-chayim, Aharon was standing among the living and the dead, the dead and the living, it says Pasuk specifically in that order. Vata'asar ha the plague stopped. Okay, so apparently Ketoret, based on Pesukim in the Torah, has the power to stop a plague. Okay, Kamara Masechet Shabbat on Petet says as follows. It's talking about over there, the, the context of this Kamara is that when Moshe went up to the Shamayim, and uh, to receive the Torah, the angels didn't want to let him let him have it, and they started to argue with uh, with Moshe. Hashem told them, "Okay, debate." The angel says, "Why are you giving the Torah, keep the Torah in the Shemaim? Why are you giving it to the people?" And um, Hashem told Moshe, "Okay, you have to answer them, debate them." So Moshe starts to go through things in the Torah. Kabed avicha He brings it to you, you, you angels. Do you have parents? Lo uh, Who can you guys kill? Right? Lo Do you have anything to steal? He goes back and forth. At the end, um, Moshe wins the debate, and the angels of Modeh, they admit that the Torah belongs in this world, not in Shamaim, and they give it to Moshe along with Hashem gives it to Moshe, and along with that, the angels give him gifts. It says the Gemara like this. The Gemara says, Miyad kol echad echad na'asala ohev. Immediately, all the angels that were trying to prosecute against Moshe to keep the Torah in the Shamaim became his love. They loved him. They became his friends. Umasar lo davar. Each one gave him something. Shene Imar, Pasuk says, Alita Lamarom, you went up into the Shamaim. Shavita Shevi, you took back spoils. Lakahat Matanot Be'adam. Okay, you took gifts for people. Bishar Shikeraucha Adam, the Gemara says, what? This Adam, because they called you a person, meaning, what is this person doing up among the angels was the question that started the debate. So, 
אוקיי? לקחת מתנות באדם, <coughs> לקחת מתנות, זה גמרא פריד, אוקיי? אף מלאך המוות מסר לו דבר. גמרא says that even מלאך המוות gave something to משה, שנאמר, וייתן את הקטורת ויכפר על העם. ואומר, ויעמוד בין המתים ובין החיים. Those are פסוקים that we just saw, right, from the story in the Midbar. And it says that, the, you know, the ketoret was what brought kapara to the am, and it was able to stop the plague. So the Gemara, ilav de'amar le mihava yada. If the malach ha'mavit did not tell Moshe that the ketoret has the power to stop plagues, how would Moshe know that that's what needed to be done? And the Gemara stops right there. Okay, so clearly from the Psukim and from the Gemara that the Ketoret has a tremendous power, specifically in um, stopping plagues. And being that we're all stuck home um, with this, what's going on outside of the coronavirus, I thought that it might be pertinent if we analyze the Ketoret, right? We're not able to bring the Ketoret. So hopefully this is the beginning of the Geulah and the Mashiach will be here very soon and we'll all be able to smell the Ketoret on the Mizbeach in Beit HaMikdash. But until that point, what we need to do is to use our mouths to bring the Ketoret through our Tefilot. And therefore, I think it, it's very pertinent that we should understand what we're saying when we pray Ketoret. And with that, I'm going to start the explanation that we um, from the Tefilah that we say every day, okay? So he said, You are our God, that our forefathers would bring before you this incense. Right? When we had the Beit HaMikdash, Like you commanded to Moshe, your um, prophet, And then the, the Ketoret starts out with a couple of Psukim, that are quoted from the Torah regarding the, the Ketoret, the description of the Ketoret, and seemingly some of the ingredients from the Ketoret, not all, which we'll have to get from someplace else, we'll see in a minute, but these are the in the Torah. So this is the beginning of our Tefillah, it says, Vayomer Hashem el Moshe, Hashem tells Moshe, Kach lecha samim, take spices, nataf ushchelet vehelbena, those are names of spices, which we'll analyze in a minute, okay? And again, samim, spices again. Ulvona, another spice, zaka, pure. Bad bebad yeh, they should be mixed well, ground. Okay? Ve'asita ota, you should take those spices. And what do you do with it? Ketoret rokach ma'aser okeach mimulach tahor kodesh. You should grind them up. And they should be mixed well. Mimulach can mean either mixed or salted. There's a machloket. Right? But either we put some salt in there, which we'll see with part of this, the ingredient list, which we're going to get from the Gemara in a minute. But it notice that, first of all, the Psukim only mention Nataf, Shchelet, Halbena, and Levona, four of the spices. That's all it says. Okay, continue. Vishahakta mimena hadek. I want you to grind it very well. You shall place it before the Eidut, which is the Aaron, which means in where? Be'ohel Mo'ed. It's going to be in the Kodesh portion of the Beit HaMikdash or the Mishkan, depending on what, where they were at the time. Asher Iva'ed Lecha Shama. That's where I will be meeting you. Kodesh Kadashim Tiyeh Lachem. This Ketoret should have the status of the most holy. V'ne'emar, other Pesukim say, V'hiktir Alav Aharon Ketoret Samim Baboker Baboker on it, talking about the, the Korban HaTamid, uh, the uh, sacrifices brought in Beit HaMikdash, you should also bring in it. So what? We're going to bring Ketoret, like we just mentioned. Baboker, Baboker, what, what, you do it early in the morning. Behetivo tanirot yaktirana. When you are cleaning out the menorah, the candles, the, the lamps of the menorah, that's when I want you to bring the Ketoret. When you go to light the candles in the afternoon, also, you're going to bring the ketoret again in the afternoon. I want it to be in front of me, in front of Hashem, for throughout your generations. That's the psukim that talk about ketoret in the Torah, specifically the ingredients and the time of when to bring it. Okay, so that's the first paragraph of our ketoret. Now, the problem with that is that doesn't seem like a full ingredient list based on what we know because we say it every day, right? So we're going to 
jump into the Gemara, it's my Gemara Masechet Kiritut, um, and it's also obviously the next paragraph of our Ketoret in our Tefillah, and says as follows, Tanura Banan, okay, the rabbis taught, Bitum HaKetoret Ketzad, this Ketoret spice, this incense that we have, this ground up incense, what is it made out of? Says the Gemara as follows, Shelosh Me'ot Veshishim Ushmona Manim Hayuba, there were 368 portions in the Ketoret, okay, Shelosh Me'ot Veshishim Vahamisha, Kiminya Namot Hama, 365 out of the 368 corresponding to the 365 days of the solar calendar. Mane bechol yom, we would use one portion of it daily for 365 days. And that one portion, mahasito baboker, u mahasito ba'erev, right? I'm over here in the, okay? We bring half of it in the morning, half of it in the in the evening, because we saw from the Pesukim, the Torah, that the Torah told us to bring Ketura twice a day, in the morning, baboker, baboker, and then again in the afternoon, right? So we're taking this one portion that we have for the daily, uh, for the day, and we're splitting it in half. We're going to bring half the Ketura incense on, in, in the morning and half in the afternoon. Okay, well, that accounts for 365 out of how many? It said 360. Eight. So there's still three extra portions, right? So the Baraita, that's actually Mishnah continues. Those extra three, what are we doing with them? That's where I am right now, right? Kohen Gadol. The Kohen Gadol goes to those three uh, extra portions, right? And what does he do? He will take from them. Uh, his handfuls, which means his two hands cupped together, and he puts them into this three um, three extra portions, right? What is he doing? When is he doing that? What's it for? Biyom Okay? We're going, those extra three portions are used for the service of Yom Kippur, the day that the Kohen Gadol goes into the Kodesh HaKodeshim once a year. You know what he does in the Kodesh HaKodeshim? He brings Ketoret. So we need to have extra ketoret for Yom Kippurim. So we make three extra portions, okay, um, from the 365, and the other three, that one, three, that three extra ketoret is for that one day of Yom Kippur. Great. What do we do with those extra three? Mahaziran lamachteshet be'erev Yom Kippurim. We return the three extra portions to the grinder on Erev Kippur, because it's going into Kodesh HaKodeshim, we want it to be ground the most fine. We want to make sure that it's Daka Min HaDaka. It's the finest, most ground. So we return it after it's been ground prior. We return it to the grinder to grind it again. Great. So that, so far, we understand what the portions are. Now let's figure out the ingredients. So it continues. Ahad Asar Samanim hayu ba. It said there were 11 spices in the ketoret. Now that's a problem. Why? Because if we go back to the psukim that we read in the Torah, it doesn't say 11. It says four, right? Well, let's go look at the psukim again. Okay. Pasim psukim are a little. Oops, I have to go right here. There we go. And we're going to highlight. Okay. And we go like this. There's the pasuk. Spices. Okay, what spices? Nataf, that's one. Shehalet, that's two. Halbena, that's three. Spices, samim, spices again. Ulvona, frankincense, right? Zaka, pure. That's it. Four. I see four. The Baraita says 11. So, again, um, almost every mitzvah in the Torah is impossible to fulfill without halakha Moshe Sinai. Uh, almost every Torah, almost every mitzvah. Uh, the explanation of the mitzvot all came verbally to Moshe on Har Sinai. And this is just another example uh, of that fact because clearly uh, the, the Torah seems to be saying there's only four and we're saying there's 11, okay? Now, how do we learn out 11 from the Pasuk? It's interesting. So first of all, samim is a plural form of the word spices. So that's spices, the minimum Plural is two. So let's count Samim is two. Nataf, that's three. Shhelet, that's four. Halbena, that's five. Then I have Samim again, plural form, telling me to double what I just got to. So I was up to five, now it's ten. Because again, the plural form. And then Levona, number eleven. And therefore the Baraita says downstairs, back to the where back to the Gemara we are. And it's telling us over here, 
right? That the ketoret had how many? 11 spices. Ve'ahad asar samanim hayuba. There were 11. And how do we know? That's how we know. Samim, plural first, right? And then the, the three specifications. So that's two plus three is five. Then samim again, double the five to 10. And then we had live one out to end. That's number 11. Okay. Um, and that is where the number comes from. Okay. And now let's look at the list of what they are. I actually went and I, uh, I made a little picture on the side. You'll see we're going to go through them as we go one at a time to explain to them to, in English what they are, what they should look like. And here we go. The first one on the list. Again, Halachal Moshe Misiai. How would we know this? Hasori. All right. So sori is known on the left screen now. On the left side is balsam sap. It's from the balsam tree. It smells, it smells beautiful. Okay. It's the, what we the Torah refers to as nataf, which means to drip. Okay. And it comes from the tree. It's balsam. Okay, so we're going to see first the ingredients, and then we'll look at the how much of each ingredient. So tzipor, tzori is first, then tziporin. Tziporin is, I don't even know how to pronounce it, but it's called ancha or anka, I'm not sure. Okay, and that is what the Torah references as shehelet. Okay, it is uh, comes from the uh, shells of some kind of mussel that grows and that lives in the Red Sea. Okay. Um, and we'll see what that what that has to do with spices in a minute, okay? And the next one on the list is halbena, which is galbanum. This is what it looks like, okay? And then we come to levona, which is frankincense, okay? Again, well, this is what it looks like. And after that, the, the baraitas tells us that those four are mishkal shiv'im shiv'im maneh. Which means that each one of the first four, Tzori, Tziporin, Chalbena, and Levona, 70 portions of each. Okay, so let's do some math now. 70 of balsam, 70 of ancha, 70 of galbanum, right? And 70 of frankincense, 70 times four. That's so far 280. We know that they were supposed to get to 368, right? So, so far, here's the ingredient list, right? These four, 70 each. Next, more, which is myrrh. Okay, and then kitsia, which is some kind of flower, apparently, is what it looks like. Okay, and shibolet nerd, spikenard, this is what it looks like. And after that, kirkum, right, saffron, which is the little red strains inside that flower. That's what saffron is. Okay, and then the, it continues to tell us mishkal, the weight of those, shisha asar, shisha asar mane. Those are 16 each, okay? So let's go back up. And we're looking at myrrh, 16, cassia, 16, spikenard, 16, and saffron, 16, right? So let's do some math again. 16 times 4, 64, right? So we had 280 for the 70s, right? And now we have another 64. So 280 plus 64, right, is 344. So we're getting closer to our number, okay? After that, kosht shenem asar. That's what the, the Baita says. Next in the ingredient list is something called kosht. What is kosht in English? Kastis. This is what it looks like. 12 portions, okay? Kidlufa shelosha. So we're going to add 12 onto our number first, right? So we have 344, we're adding 12, 356, okay? And we said kilufa, which is sandalwood, is three portions, 359. And kinamon, last one on the list, cinnamon, right? Something that, we, that, one, we, that one, at least we know what that one is, right? Um, kilufa shilosha, and number 11, kinamon tisha. 11, sorry, nine portions of cinnamon. Total number, 368, right? And therefore, that's the 368 portions that we're talking about up here. How was it made? This was the list of the ingredients. We had 368 portions. This is the breakdown of how much each one was included in the ketoret. And then it was ground up together and mixed very well, okay? So that brings us to the end of the ingredient list. Now, what happens over here? If we continue reading, we notice that there's something going on over here. After I get to the 11 and I finished my 368, it continues to give me other ingredients, 
which is going to be an issue. What's those for? Borid Karshina, Tish'a Kabin, Lai from Karshina, Nine Kav, right? Yen Kaflisin, wine from Cyprus, Se'in Tilat, three Se'a, the Kabin Tilata, and three Kavs of wine. If you can't find wine from Cyprus, maybe Hamar Hivar Atik, any old, meaning aged white wine. Okay, and then what? Melach Sidomit Rova, a quarter of a cup of salt from Sodom. Ma'ale right? Ashan, something called smoke, uh, rising smoke, that causes the smoke to rise. Kol Shehu. The Gemara says of, that regarding this Ma'ale Ashan that, um, that it was a secret. The Kohanim that were in charge of making this Ketoret didn't want to give out what it was that they added into the Ketoret that made the Ketoret smoke column, stake, uh, smokestack go straight up to Shemaim. The Gemara says that one of the, the miracles of the Ketoret, of the Beit HaMikdash, was that the Ketoret, the smoke from the Ketoret rose straight up in a pillar of smoke, it didn't. It wasn't dispersed um, as it rose. It went straight up to Shemaim, uh, and uh, apparently that was based on some kind of ingredient that the Kohanim added. We don't know what it is. They were, they didn't want to give it away. <laughs> it was their secret. It was actually their livelihood. There was a family called Bet Aftinas that was in charge of creating the Ketoret Hasamim, and they passed it down through their generations of what the perfect uh, mixture of this Ma'ale Ashan was. Um, and they didn't share it with anybody, so we don't really know what it is. Rabbi Natana Bavli Omer, he says, Af den kol shihi, you can also add, or they used to add even a drop of um, Jordanian sap. So again, that's from a tree, not sure. Right? Im natan ba devash pisala, if you added honey to the list, you've made the entire mixture uh, pasul. Cannot be used. The im hiser ahat mikol sammanea. If you missed any one of the ingredients in the mixture, hayav mita. Okay, person is liable to death. Okay. Now, so we have a couple of questions about this paragraph. First of all, we have a, a little bit of a clearer picture about what is the katora made out of, what the shares of the portions of each one are. Right, the eleven spices, and then I'm. I have a question that's still hanging about what's this other stuff that what's Bodhi Kashina and what's the Yen Kafrisin? I mean, why would that be there if the Torah doesn't tell me, right? So we know the Torah only said 11 and now we're adding ingredients, right? So comes along with a bunch of Ben Gamli El Omer. Hasori eno el shiraf hanotef me'ase haketaf. Sori is sap that drips from the tree called Kitaf, which we said was balsam, right? That's what the first one on the list was, right? The Torah referenced it as nataf, as dripping. And now we have Shimon Gamaliel identifying it for us and telling us that it is balsam. Fine. Borit Kashina, which is now number 12 in our list up above, which we said, what's it for? Lemahiba'a. Why do I need Borit Kashina? It's lie. Why do I need this lie for? Remember, Tsipotin is like a shell. Um, and it says we want to use the lie to shine it, to make it to make it shiny, you know, smoothen it out. And we're using the lie for that purpose. Okay, so it's a processing agent for the tsipotin. It's not that it was mixed into the spices, it's um, before I mix the tsipotin into the 11 spices, it needs processing. And therefore, what do I do? Bori kashina, I use it to rub down the tzipotin. Okay. Yen kafrisin limahuba. What was the wine from Cyprus for? Says the Gemara, kedei lishrot bo at tzipotin, kedei shtehe azah. I use the wine, I soak the tzipotin in the wine. It makes the smell more pungent. It makes it smell better. So again, it's a processing agent for the tzipotin. Okay, the Gemara says, "Vehalo meraglaim yafinla." You didn't have to use these uh, the wine, or you could have used meraglaim. Meraglaim normally translates into urine. Could have used urine to process the siporin. There is an opinion that says meraglaim is actually water from a stream that was near Yerushalayim that was called raglaim. Okay, fine. One of two possible explanations, right? So it's either actual urine or it means the water from this place called Raglaim. Ella, why don't so why don't you why do you have to use the wine? Why don't you use the, this uh, Meraglaim? 
And we answer, Ela she'en machnisim meraglaim b'mikdash mipenei ha'kavod. We don't allow to bring meraglaim into the Beit HaMikdash because it's disrespectful. Okay, so if you tell me urine, I understand disrespectful. If you tell me that it's from the stream called raglaim, what's it disrespectful? Either, either because of the name, it's called meraglaim, so it's maybe, or the Gemara also says that, that, that the Gemara was the Rishonim explanation on the Gemara saying that, that the raglaim stream was used to launder people's clothes. So the water wasn't so uh, clean, wasn't so nice looking, so disrespectful for Beit HaMikdash. Fine. Tanya, continue. Tanya Rabbi Natan Omer. Rabbi Natan says, we're in the third paragraph of the Ketorah now. Keshehu shohek omer hedek hetev hetev hadek. Mepne shakol yafe la besamim. He says, while the, the person that was in charge of the grinding of these spices together ground, he had to talk out loud and say, grind well, well ground. Grind well, well ground. And he, he was cheering himself on almost like, uh, right? Like Kia, when you when you do a uh, martial arts, you have to channel the power to ground, to ground it. It has to be ground beautiful. And therefore, the Gemara says, Mipne shakol yafela besamim. The sound of his voice is good for the spices. It makes him grounded better. And there's two explanations about the sound. One of them is the sound of his voice. The other one is he was using a, um, you know, a mortar and pestle, and the sound of the banging was good because it was giving him the more you bow, pow, 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 pow. You hear the sound, boom, boom, boom. boom. You want to ground well. So either it's his voice himself speaking out loud, or it's the sound of the mortar and pestle banging against each other that would cause him to grind it well. Okay. Mara says, Pitemal Hatsain Keshira. If I ground exactly half the portion of the 368. I ground half. Instead of 70, 70, 70, I used 35, 35, 35. Instead of the ones that are 16, I used eight, right? I did exactly half in ratio of, of the proper ratio. Keshira. It's kosher. Le shalish ulravia lo shamanu. If I ground it in a third, if I ground a quarter, we never heard that that's allowed or not. Rabbi Yehuda, right? Am, am, am Rabbi Yehuda, he tells us, This is the rule. If you did it in the proper proportion, it is valid as a half. If a person did miss one of the ingredients, he was is liable to death. Okay, so there we have an answer. Next. Tanin bar kapara. Bar kapara taught. Ahat le shishim o le shivim shana haita ba'a shiraim shil hatsa'im. Okay, so let's go back to the math we were talking about before. There's 368 portions in the Ketoret, right? And we said that the three extra, the ones that don't correspond to the days of the year, were used on Kippur. And what did we do? The Kohen Gadol took a full, his two his two palms, and he stuck them into ketoret together, cupped together, and pulled out a share of ketoret from those three that it would be used for the um, pro the service in the Kodesh HaKodeshim. Now, the three, ha his, his handful, right, his, his palmfuls are not the amount of three. There's leftover. He took from the three. Doesn't mean that it's not all three, because otherwise, why would he need to put his hands in there, right? So there's going to be leftover. So it says now, um, Bar Kapara, Ahat le Shishim, Ol Shivim Shana, once approximately somewhere in between every 60 and 70 years, Haitaba Shiraim le Hatsain. The leftover that the Kohen had after he took what he needed for Kippur, that leftover once in every 60 to 70 years would equal exactly half or would come to half of the required amount of Ketorik. Let's do the math. If he had the whole full amount, right, which was three mane, so 60 years of three mane, right, is about 180. All right, half of the 368. So we're getting close, right? So somewhere in between 60 or 70 years, depending on the size of the Kohen Gadol's hands. It wasn't always the same Kohen Gadol. It wasn't exactly the perfect amount of uh, uh, used every year removed. Because when you can imagine when you're putting your hands into a bunch of spices and you're removing some, so you don't get exactly the same amount every year, right? And therefore, the, the once in 
somewhere in between 60 and 70 years, we would have a leftover of 184 mana, which is exactly half of the 368 needed. So somewhere that's what he says over here. And therefore, when that year happened, that they finally, they would keep it year after year after year after year, and they would keep the leftovers and keep leftovers. Finally, somewhere in between 60 and 70, they have exactly half, and then they can grind only half that year, the other half, right? Because Biuda told us, if you did it in the proper portion, proportions, then you can grind half. And that's what they would do that year and mix the new one half that they created this year with all the leftover from the prior 60 to 70 years. And now they have enough for Ketoret for that year. Okay. One other thing that he taught. If anybody put a, just a little bit, kortov is a measurement of honey. You wouldn't be able to stand up from the beautiful smell. It would knock you out. It's so beautiful. That's true. So what, don't we want to worship Hashem in the best way? Why would we not put honey? You're telling me that if it was honey in there, I wouldn't be able to stand from the smell? So why should we not put honey? Don't we want to? We want we want Hashem to enjoy, right? And do the best we can. So put honey. He says, oh, no, no. You know why? Which is sometimes things that we need to just remember that 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 you know what we think we want to do. We think we want to do. Just do what the Torah tells you. The Torah says, Hashem says, I don't need honey. I don't want honey. That yeah, it makes it better, probably. But you know what? I told you not to do it. Just listen to me, right? Because that's the answer Hashem's telling you. Sometimes because is the answer. Why not? Because. Okay? And we need to learn to accept that. Hashem says, don't do it. Fine. Adonai said, what, Imana, we close off the Ketoret portion by, by a tefillah to Hashem. Hashem, our legion of masters, the legion should be with us. Misgavlano Elia Kosela should raise us up. Hashem should raise us up. Hashem Sevaot, right? Again, Master Hashem, the legion, master of the legions. Ashre Adam Boteach Bach, praiseworthy is the person who relies on you. Adonai Hoshia, Amelech Ya'anenu Biyom Koreno Hashem, you should uh, redeem us. And the king, the master Hashem will answer on the day that we call out to him. Hashem should look at our 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 gift as something sweet, like what used to be, like the prior generations. And maybe now that we have a little bit clearer understanding of what we is that we're saying, if we have the proper kavana, we can channel the power that the Ketorah, that the Torah tells us the Ketorah has to stop the magifa. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen. Amen.